Jackson. I'm the former relationship manager for Stonyfield Organic, and so in that role, I spend a lot of time out on the farms working with the cows, the farmers, um, to bring great quality milk uh, to London Dairy to turn it into yogurt. And I'm Matt. I'm the farm manager here here at High Meadows, and I've been here for three years since the startup, and it's been a great pleasure working with Stonyfield and the High Metal team here and and Allie and and I think we're gonna let Allie go eat lunch with her uh, herd mates now. So we're gonna let her slip away from the live feed, and then we'll talk to you a little bit more. Thank you, Allie. Or you can sit. Yeah, she can hang, yeah. hang out. And we'll get a little bit more into Allie. I know many of you shared questions about Allie, wanting to learn a little bit more about her, so we'll definitely get into that at the end. Um, but I think, just to kind of kick things off, um, Jason, it would be really helpful for you to kind of explain to everybody, you know, a little bit about the milk supply program, about how Stonyfield and High Meadows Farm work together, and sort of what the connection is there. Sure. Uh, so about five years ago at Stonyfield, we decided that we would like to start a direct supply, meaning we have contracts directly with farms, organic farms in New England, um, to procure milk to bring to London Dairy to turn into awesome organic yogurt. And uh, so we started that program about five years ago, and sometime shortly after that, uh, Eric, who is not here today, Eric Zim is actually the farm owner. Um, He's not here for good reason though, right? Yeah, he's, correct. He's on his vacation, but what that means for an organic farmer is he's at Regenerative Ag School. So he's, he's in uh, Missouri learning about how to be a better organic uh, farmer. So that's where Eric is. But shortly uh, after the, the start of the direct supply program, Eric um, had approached Tony Field about the possibility. Um, he grew up actually on a conventional dairy, so non-organic dairy here in Hoosier Falls but his mindset was to start an organic dairy because he believes more in the organic model, cows out on pasture, um, and not using pesticides and, and herbicides. So uh, we entered into an agreement and Eric began his journey about three years ago with Matt and uh, Stonyfield, and they've grown from, I don't know Matt, how many cows did you milk in pails there? <laughs> <laughs> we, we first started, we had what, 80 cows, I think. Yeah. We milked in buckets in the tie stall, and then, then we went to the... And they built a beautiful free stall here uh, in Hoosick Falls. You probably see behind us some of the great scenery and pastures that the cows live in um, most of the year. And they're up to milking a little over 200 cows now here, making a little addition on the barn. And, um, yeah. What type of cows do you guys have here? Yeah, Holstein Jersey. This is this guy here, right? That's a Holstein, and this one here is a Holstein Jersey cross. And, uh, Jersey, Ashires, red and white Holstein. So Allie's a red and white Holstein that we saw earlier, and and Matt has pointed out some of these. I would say probably at um, High Meadows, we're making more of a transition to Jersey. Jersey yep. Um, we know that jerseys have a lower carbon footprint, um, and that's one thing that we look at in the organic model, and especially at Sony Field. Um, so they are making a transition to, to more jerseys. They're also great grazers. Great. Right. Awesome. So I'd love to learn a little bit more too about what it takes to transition a conventional dairy farm to an organic dairy farm. I know that there's, uh, it takes years, right, to kind of get both the, the farmland and the cows fully transitioned. Right, land takes three years. Um, so you can't put no pesticides or man-made fertilizers on them in, uh, in the three-year time. And, and you got to document everything, you know, all, a lot of paperwork trail. It's all on me. <laughs> the fun stuff. <laughs> yeah, all the fun <laughs> stuff. And then, uh, the, but on the cow side, it only takes one year okay. to transition them, you know. Of, no treatments or whatever, yeah. stuff Is like that. Is it easier tr to transition the cow when they're younger or older, or does it not matter? When It's easier to transition a cow when it's a calf, because mm -hmm. you only got to feed it, you know, grain. Right. If, if it's a milk cow, you got to do other things, you know, you got to milk them last, you can't, they can be with the other cows, but it's just, it's harder to transition a milk cow than it is a younger calf. And when, when you guys started, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but you brought a group of heifers, right? Uh, and transitioned that group of heifers, and then you've added other organic cows that correct, you've yes, yep. that were already certified. Okay. And I love personally learning.
learning about the different kind of personality traits of the different types of cows. You were telling us the Jerseys are nosier than some of the other uh, yes. types, right? Yes, they are. They uh, they they always attend tend to come up and see what's going on, as you can see. We're surrounded and by <laughs> Jerseys, actually, yeah. so that makes perfect sense. So. <laughs> They've been eating the leaves off the trees and uh, the picnic blanket went awry from a jersey. Yes, we did have a fantastic picnic uh, blanket set up with an old fashioned uh, basket and they just you know, wreaked havoc and kind of took it over. But that's what happens when you try to have a picnic with 80 cows in a pasture. So, But they are loving it out here. I mean, we've been kind of just hanging out in the pasture watching them do their thing. and. Um, it's really awesome to kind of just see them in, in the environment and habitat in which they should be in, really just enjoying um, the fresh pasture and being with one another. And um, I'd love to kind of walk through the, the farm, the free, free, free stall, free free stall, stall. Farm, that, uh, barn. barn that you guys are putting in and learn a little bit more about how that works and, and how the cows kind of uh, can uh, deal with that situation. Okay. The, the free stall barn is a three row barn they call it so it's got three rows of stalls for them to lay down at any time then there's a feed alley with a feed bunk uh, so they can get up and go eat at any time they're hungry um, and then free choice water there's uh, six waters in the barn so they have plenty of space for water because they do drink 30 gallons of water a day wow so That's a lot. So it takes a lot of water to make milk too. Mm -hmm. And I would just add a couple other features that I think are really cool about uh, the barn here at Hoosier uh, Falls is they have curtains on the side that are automatically controlled. They go up and down for ventilation. They're high on a hill so they have cross ventilation. They don't, actually don't have to use a lot of fans. So they don't use the energy uh, that it would take to run those fans. So I, that's a really cool model here. And then as far as the cows being in the barn, they're outside in the pasture now. One thing I would mention with organic standards. So the cows are outside at least 120 days a year, but more than that in most situations. Um, so yeah, they spend a lot of time outside, but when it gets really, really cold in the winter time, obviously they need to put some Yeah, of course. Yeah. so curious. I mean, I've never been this up and close with, uh, personal with cows before and I can never get over how just friendly and curious they are. I mean, they're just such wonderful, wonderful animals. So what else can you guys tell us about how we work together? I mean, I think it's such an interesting aspect of the Stonyfield brand and um, I personally love, this is my third farm I've been able to go to in just two weeks um, and I've learned so much about um, you know, how Stonyfield can be so connected to our uh, farming community and you play, Jason, such a fantastic role in really bridging that gap. So anything you can kind of share about, about that would be wonderful. One thing I would mention, and um, Matt can say more about it if he wants, is um, so at Stonyfield we're working on a project called Open Team, which is open technology ecosystem for you know, management of ecosystem agriculture. Um, and that is a, a program that has been spearheaded by Stonyfield and Bull Snack and, um, and the Bar Institute. And it's really looking at how can we make soils healthier and how can we capture more carbon in the soil. So we have uh, 10 pilot farms that we're working with this year and Open Team is one, that, I mean, uh, High Meadows is one that's working with us on Open Team, one of the pilot farms. So we spend a lot of time doing things like soil sampling and um, looking at pasture management. Uh, we're looking at a new technology this year called Pasture Map, which Matt will probably tell you more about. <laughs> but, um, tracking pasture intake, uh, where cows are. So so it's it's simple in some aspects, like cows out on pasture, but we're definitely using technology to try to reduce our footprint. Yeah, that's a really interesting intersection of science and agriculture. And it's very complex. and. Um, I'm really proud that Stonyfield is investing so much in that development. Um, it's really, really interesting. Um, so should we talk about cows? I love the, the fun fact, the 30 gallons a day, that's crazy. I can't even fathom drinking that much water. But any other fun like cow facts that we can kind of share with um, the audience here? I mean, many people that are joining the live stream today are a part of the Have a Cow program and have been loyal members for many years. Thank you all for the continued enthusiasm and support there. Um, but this 
crew is just so excited about the cows and learning more about them. So if there is any fun facts or interesting tidbits, I think that would be kind of fun to share those. Matt shared how much water they drink, so they also eat about 100 pounds of feed a day, so that's grass, if you can imagine going out and harvesting 100 pounds of pasture a day, it's a lot of uh, feed, so... I mean, um, when we came out here, what, an hour ago, it was it was knee high in grass, so they really do a good job <laughs> of uh, cutting down the grass on their own through their own diet, which is awesome. And that's another part of, uh, Matt can explain more about rotational grazing a little bit, maybe, Matt, how you, how you swap them around, but... Cows don't just come out in one pasture for one day, happen to be in this pasture today, but actually this morning, a few hours ago, they were in another pasture. Right. So we move them around, so every 12 hours they have a new, a fresh new paddock to graze off of, because no cow wants to go back and eat, and eat old feed. So, so every, so after every milking, they go out and they get a new section, and then on the hot days, we let them back in the barn so they can get a TMR ration, which is a total mixed ration of bailage and grain. So when they take a bite, they get a full, a full meal, vegetables and steaks and all that, all, 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 all in one bite. So every cow eats the same. And then after the night milking, they actually go out and graze all night and lounge around and sleep all, all on nice comfy mattress ground. It sounds like the life. I mean, that doesn't sound half bad. And shade here yeah. as well. They're all under the tree at the moment, or a bunch of them. Right? I think they ate better than you ate last night. You said you yeah. had cereal for dinner I last know. night. <laughs> Cows always come first. Of course, of course. Uh, were there questions that Yeah, well, we got lots of questions of about the Allie, the star of the show, who has escaped us, but she's out there with her friends. Um, can we answer or ask some Allie specific yep, questions? Yep, we can do that. Um, the first and, and most uh, requested, let's see, let me pull it up, was a little bit more about how she got her name. Which is an inside oh, joke here at Stonyfield. <laughs> Maybe Jason, you can answer that. That's, this is, that's a loaded question. I was not here the day she got her name. So Allie also has a number because they use management numbers here at High Meadows, but they also have names. And But Allie had escaped the system of getting a name. So when she decided, they decided to have her become part of the Have a Cow program, the person that runs that program at Stonyfield <laughs> became her namesake. And so that's Allison. Uh, and so... She also has red hair and... And fiery personality qualities, just like So Ellie does an Allie. <laughs> Which is a perfect, really a perfect match. So it's a great fit, an inside joke, but now you all know. Yeah, now you all are on the inside of that one. And she's laughing, just off camera. Yep. <laughs> um, what are Allie's favorite activities? Uh, eating and sleeping. Mine too, mine too. <laughs> Um, and so this is a more general question that came through that I thought was interesting. I think when most people think about dairy farming, they think about those 3 a.m. wake up calls, um, which is, you know, just part of the deal, right? Early mornings, late nights. Um, could you just take us through kind of like a day in the life of, of yourself and what it takes to run this place? Yep. Uh, so we, here we start at four o'clock in the morning. We get up, we gotta go get the cows off the pasture, um, bring them into the barn, then we milk them all. Then they go out to pasture and eat, and then I mix a load of TMR, run that off. And then they spend the day eating, and then at about 3.30 in the afternoon, we milk them again. And then after that, they go out to pasture at night and spend the night outside. And they get on these routines, they're very accustomed to that, right? Oh yeah, yeah. yep. Yeah. They, but I won't let poor Matt get away that easily because I think he has a few more things he does in his <laughs> yeah. day. As this morning, he was telling me that he was mowing last night with, I, I noticed the new piece mowing equipment here and I was asking him about it and he said he was mowing last night. And then his son told me this morning when he was helping me wash cows that uh, he was mowing with his dad last night. So I have a sneaking suspicion that's why he had cereal at yes. 10 o'clock last night. <laughs> a lot going on. I know it takes so much to uh, keep the cows happy and uh, I know you do a lot of hard work, so thank you for everything you do for that. Um, we're wrapping up. I mean, we are coming up on the end of our live stream, and I just wanted to take a few seconds just to thank you all for joining. Uh, this is so fun for us to kind of get out and be in the weeds, you know, no pun intended, but really get out in the pasture, and it's incredible to take you all along with us. 
Um, I posted on Facebook um, kind of a request from you all. Where do you want to take, where do you want us to take you next? What are you interested in seeing, learning more about? Please make sure you leave your comments there. We'd love to accommodate any of those requests um, that come through. Uh, if you're interested in joining the Have a Cow program, uh, you can select Allie as your, your cow of choice, kind of follow along um, what it's like to live on an organic dairy farm through her eyes, which is so cool. Um, you can head to our homepage or stonyfield.com slash have a cow. And the last thing I'll end with is uh, Stonyfield did something pretty epic today. Um, we love cows so much that we want to dress like them too. So we designed a very chic uh, Moomoo dress that is live on Amazon for purchase. And it is a very fun, very amazing uh, organic cotton ploy material for a summer dress. So it's more or less one of the funniest things we've ever done, but be sure to check it out. It's on our Instagram page and you can uh, shop there and uh, go to our Amazon to actually purchase. And with that, uh, do you have anything else you guys want to add? But uh, No, I, I, I want to thank Matt and Eric yeah. who's not here for everything they do every day to bring us high quality organic milk yeah. that we saw leave a few minutes ago on a truck to go to Stony Field, which tomorrow will be made into the yogurt. So you can't get much pressure by that. Thank you all so much for joining and have a wonderful weekend and a safe weekend and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.